26 reads, They brought the sacred stone out of the temple of Baal and burned it. They demolished the sacred stone of Baal and tore down the temple of Baal. And people have, and people have used it for a tree to this day. So Jehu destroyed Baal worship in Israel. However, he did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, which he had caused Israel to commit worship golden calves of Bethel and Dan. Verse 3. The Lord said to Jacob, Because you have done well in accomplishing what is right in my eyes, and have done to the house of Israel all I have in mind to do, your descendants will sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. Yet Jehu was not careful to keep the Lord the Lord or of Israel all his heart. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, which he had caused Israel to commit. Listen to me. In those days the Lord began to reduce the size of Israel, as they had overpowered the Israelites throughout their territory. I want to invite our pastor, it's Brian, to bring this morning's message. Zeal of Jehu, the arraignment. Hi, good morning. God's house and also to be in his presence and, uh, and to be with you, to be with his saints and to give him glory and for all the goodness that he's uh, done to us and all the great things that he has done. And of course, you know, yesterday I came into the uh, church building and, uh, and I was very, very happy and surprised to see these posters and, and uh, those who kind of helped came in yesterday and helped put up the posters and if you guys can pay attention, it's clear the people from our church, you know. Awesome, right? Give them a big, big round of applause. I know it took time to do it. I know it took time to do it, and I appreciate you guys uh, giving that extra effort. Shows that zeal, amen. Shows that zeal, uh, and uh, to try to contextualize our uh, our BBS, which is a BBS that's put on by our church and our people are involved. Right? We praise God for that. So I look forward to our awesome time of vacation in Bible school. Um, not only that, but um, yesterday I was supposed to give thanks to those who went out in the evening time for our time of visitation. It was a great time of visitation. We kind of went out and we were able to give out uh, tracts and, and flyers and, and things like that uh, about the vacation by the school. It was, it, was, it was a good time. I want to thank uh, all those who came out. Uh, the two ladies who I, who I went out with, uh, Sister Sandra and um, Sister Sandra Madrid and Sister Zena, I mean, those, uh, those are some serious days. Yeah. I mean, they're bad, they're bad. Because there are some areas I'm going to. There's some areas in St. James. I don't care if you go into the rest of I'm going to. I will walk anywhere in St. James, but I'm going to scout all the area first to see their gangsters and stuff. So I don't have to carry people into the theater. Right, so yes, when we went out, these ladies were like, yeah, we're going up there, I'm like, um, I don't go in there. <laughs> I go in there by myself, I don't go in there with people, all right? And they're like, no, no, we've been going, up. we went in, and we were making a joke at all the time, that the angels of water with us, and then, and we went up, we went up all of them, back in the hill. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, busy walking up to people, and I'm like, stand up, like, <laughs> I said, thank you so much for going out. Um, Tim Mark, um, uh, Chris, and some of the people at all uh, tried to go. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. I know that if you call and say, you know, I'm not trying to make it, but you didn't make it, or whatever it is, um, it's because your heart is with us. Thank you so much, Chris and Charlie and others. And when Dave went all by himself, he came, uh, he had some work going on in the house, and he came to me and he said, hey, you need me some, you need me some flyers in the, in the office. But by the time I got back and I called and said, then I'm not my son here in this church. I'm not my son here to walk all the way down there. I was like, well, I'm self, I'm going to come and meet you. You need to walk by yourself. So I keep going across the water for a little bit. But that's what we need to do, man. That's what we need to do. And let's do that and thank God for those who are all the way week as well. Uh, Chanel and Sandra uh, Kumar and uh, Sandra Laljan, J. Mark, Pink Linda, uh, Shalana, and Kaisha. I appreciate you guys. This is important ministry. It's very, very important ministry. And even if you can't go with us at those particular times, do something and let me know what you're doing. Don't make excuses. Don't look for 
uh, what's wrong with this chip with this thing, and I don't tell you too much what's wrong with me too much. This is the first part. You get this right, then yeah, then start talking about the other stuff. You know, it's a beautiful thing, evangelism is a beautiful thing, and you know why we value people who do some form of evangelism very much. You know why? Because the Lord values them that way. Isn't that stupid that says how lovely on the mountains at the feet of him? If you want to have beautiful feet, they get on there and start giving all the gospel. They should say that. Put your hand models on their foot models. Their hands look very nice, their feet look very nice. And, and, and they do what they need to do. And um, yeah, and the way you get really beautiful feet, so you can model your feet on TV and show off shoes and things like that. The way you do that, you give all the gospel. You walk around with all the gospel. And uh, hey, young people come and join us. Whatever you can come and join us. Uh, put it into your schedule. Make it a thing that every week or every two weeks or every month or every two months, but make it a thing that you schedule. If you're not intentional, it won't happen. That's just the way it is. Uh, you probably know that from my experience as well. Hey, you guys kind of notice that's so all you can have. This one time. It's kind of, it's small, right? It's not much, you can actually talk with it, right? If I use this to talk to you the entire sermon, what do you think I have? Huh? I'm a good time. But it's small, so it wouldn't really bother me, right? It's a distraction. It's a distraction, yeah, but it's not a big distraction like last week. I remember the Andrew, we missed hands and things like that. So it's not that bad, I can still talk and stuff. Last week, Andrew did such a good job, I can even focus. Like it's, I can focus, I can still talk with this in my hand, right? But, um, it's a small thing, right? It's a small thing. But the fact of the matter is, even small things, like little children, if you hold them, or even this in your hand, um, even small things, once you carry them around for a long time, guess what? They feel heavier. They aren't heavier, but they say it has the same mass or ground or whatever. It has the same weight. But it gets heavier. Are you carrying small things in your life? Last week we talked about um, dealing with Bela. Baal, sorry. And Baal is a big, big problem. It was a big, big problem in Israel for many, many, many years. And what we said was, hey, you need to get rid of the Baals in your life. Those big things that are kind of hanging over your head and uh, disrupting your Christianity. You may have said, hey, you know what, Pastor Brian, you know what? I got rid of my bail last week. Or maybe I got rid of my bail a long, long time ago. So I'm good. I'm cool. What about these small things? Is there a small conversation you need to have that you can have this long? It can be between you and your wife, but it's a small thing. It bothers you, it annoys you. You cannot stand that the person does this or that and you have some form of bitterness on the inside, but you know, it's a small thing. Guess what? That's the small church. After a while, it's going to get heavier and heavier and small thing is going to become a big thing. And by the time you react to whatever the issue is, people will be like, the person will be like, where did you get on so far? It's because he carried it around for a long time. Today is in our story with uh, Jehu, as you heard from the reading, and this is the final uh, part of Seal of Jehu, the arraignment of Jehu. Arraignment means to find fault with, right? And so, in our particular story today, what we find is God finding fault with Jehu. You have faults in your life, imperfections that you are aware of, and you are saying to yourself, you know what? Nobody's perfect. So it's okay. There's one thing for people to find fault with you, but people have different opinions all the time. A person will like what you're doing, somebody else will like it. I just say it. How many of you are here now? Raise your hand. How many of you are here now? Raise your hand. Right? So it's Christianity, and it is still the Bible, right? It's just, that's just human beings. Come on. That's just the way we are. Instagram is a skin. That's all we are. That's all we are. Right? But, if God finds fault with you, that's a problem. If you are aware of something in your life that God has a problem with, that his word clearly says, I have a problem with this, and you are not willing to address it, eventually God will arraign you, eventually you'll find fault with you, and say, hey, 
need to do this. This morning is that type of morning. This is the seal of Jehu, here we remember Jehu, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your love and for your mercy. And thank you, God, for your sins who are here in this place of worship today. I was about to say in this temple that they are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So. You're here with them, it's what we say. It's like for those who don't know Jesus as God and Savior. Like, today it might be the day they might believe on Jesus. Why not? Why can't we ask for that? Uh, that's something that we want to happen. So we pray for them that when they hear these words, we know they may not get all of it. We pray about that they'll be they'll believe on Jesus. We pray for saints as well that they'll continue to believe on Jesus and that they will look forward to addressing small faults. Faults that their kids see in them and their grandkids see in them and the wives and, and friends and, and whatever it is. And they won't just say, you know what? Nobody's good. They just believe in it. But you know I'm not talking about opinions and you know, just drive a black car or a white car or whatever it is. So, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritual things. I'm talking about uh, sinful habits and offenses and little things that Christians don't hold as much like fear and doubt. Awesome. If you don't put it up there, you won't get rid of the those things. God for you is a big deal. Help us to go out to get rid of these things. And anything that we are aware of, let us deal with that. Let us have those conversations. We ask these things in Christ and all of us should have the same. So let's just get along.